We continue now with our latest NBC Connecticut Investigates exclusive. We found school bus drivers violating traffic laws behind the wheel, and those vehicles are carrying our most precious cargo. Our kids. Chief Investigator Len Bestoff has a follow-up to our Reckless on the Roads piece from November with some new findings. A school van going 70 miles per hour on Route 9 with students on board. A school bus pressing to beat a stoplight in Newington. And these vehicles carry students. While it has been a while since we've had a deadly school bus crash like the one in Hartford in 2010, they can and do happen, leaving students traumatized. I was thrown under the seats and I couldn't get back up. I tried to put my hand up on the seat, but I couldn't feel my hand. While that incident was not due to bus driver error, some of the driving we witnessed, like this school van shooting the gap on I-84 in front of a tour bus, makes you wonder if it's just a matter of time before there's another serious incident. We showed the video we have been collecting to the Connecticut School Transportation Association, or COSTA, for its assessment. That is um, not acceptable. That is not how they're trained. COSTA represents school bus companies and school systems providing their own student transportation. Report it to the bus company. I mean, our companies want to know about this. They want to be able to talk to that driver retrain that driver and make sure that it doesn't happen again. For example, school buses must go 50 miles per hour on the highway, but this one was almost keeping pace with us, going our legal limit of 65. Bus companies or the state could require more training to encourage better driving habits. Right now, Connecticut school bus drivers get on the road with less classroom and behind the wheel time than people driving similarly sized vehicles, but more training is not the answer, according to Costa. Annual retraining. We have a mandatory six hours of safety training every year for all bus drivers. Many of your larger companies will, will do much more than that. They will be doing on-the-road training. They'll be having monthly safety training meetings for their drivers. Plus, companies are already facing a school bus driver shortage, and more training could discourage an already small pool of candidates from applying. One way to possibly increase that candidate pool? could also be pay. ZipRecruiter has Connecticut in the middle of the pack in the U.S. at $19 an hour. That's a, a question of the school bus contracts and the municipal towns and, and what they can afford to pay in a contract. There have been 7,900 school bus accidents, both major and minor, since 2015. But on the positive side, year to year, the levels have not shown a marked increase, according to the Connecticut Transportation Safety Research Center at UConn. Roughly 83% of those, those bus crashes, there's no injury involved, it's just property damage only. Um, and then maybe we have 13% where there, there's actually an injury, and a very, very, very few of those actually have fatalities involved. Meanwhile, state researchers are again looking at the possibility of seat belts on school buses. And make sure you check out this story on the web and on our app. We share more of the data going back almost 10 years. For example, UConn researchers say that since 2015, on at least two occasions, school bus crashes were caused by drivers actually racing. Len Bestoff, NBC Connecticut Investigates.